Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Devinia. I'm from Malaysia and I've been studying engineering in France for the past five years now. So if you clicked into this video, you're probably A, currently majoring in engineering, B, considering majoring in engineering, or C, you're just curious about engineering. Well, regardless of what you picked, I think this video will be able to answer some of your questions. So first, let me talk to you guys about how I got into engineering. So five years ago, I completed my high school in Malaysia and at that time, I had different interests, particularly in the field of law. But I received an opportunity to study engineering in France and since studying abroad had been a dream of mine since I was 13, I decided to take it up. So I moved to France at 18 to start my mechanical engineering journey and at that point, I barely spoke a single word of French. So during my first year, I had to learn the French language as well as other engineering subjects that are part of the French baccalaureate program. Now, I'm not gonna lie that one year was probably the hardest year of my life. No, it was the hardest year of my life, hands down, because I was struggling to adapt the, to the way that science and math were taught in France, which is very much different than what I was used to. I also had grueling class hours from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m every single day for an entire year and I think most of all it was a struggle because I had this constant battle of choosing to do engineering over my passion for law. Ultimately, I felt lost. I felt like I did not fit into this big world of engineering and I also struggled to find meaning in what I was doing. And so to counter that, I tried to find YouTube videos in hopes of finding some sort of relatable content that would help me and motivate me to keep going. But there were not that many videos on that topic. However, I was lucky enough to stumble upon Jessica Drew and Natalie Barbu, who although were not in the same situation as I were, they were still two female engineers and that was enough to motivate me to keep going. Due to the lack of content of engineering students who sort of chose this major by default and not out of passion, as well as female engineers in male-dominated fields such as mechanical engineering and computer science, I wanted to fill this gap by sharing my stories and my experiences as a female mechanical engineering student who started off by having different interests and had chosen to study engineering in a completely different language. So let's dive into the video. So I am a mechanical engineering student with a major in industrial design and I chose mechanical engineering for two reasons. The first one being that it is general and because I did not have a particular interest in engineering, mechanical engineering was sort of the safest bet for me. Second of all, during my first year, mechanics was the subject that interested me the most. And although it was quite challenging, my professor was amazing. So it was enough for me to say, hey, you know what? I like it. Let's see where I can go with this. And so I went on to do a Diplôme Universitaire de Technologie, which is some sort of technical degree in France. And I majored in mechanical and production engineering in a university in Le Havre, which is in the northern part of France. So it was sort of like a mini bachelor, I would say, with a hands-on approach. I had many theoretical and practical subjects such as pure mechanics, material sciences, engineering design, robotics, AutoCAD, a lot, a lot, a lot of AutoCAD. And I remember when I said that engineering, well, mechanical engineering was very general. I not only had subjects related to mechanics, but I also had like electronics, structural analysis, programming. And then that was when I was like, hey, this is actually pretty cool. So I also got to work on a lot of projects that were very enjoyable because I got to put my theories into practice. And my favorite project during this technical degree was building a vehicle for farmers. So my group members and I were tasked to design, fabricate and assemble the entire vehicle from scratch literally from ground up i actually made a video showing you guys like the different moments during the fabrication process so i learned a lot during those two years and i had a lot of practical exposure as well i also had to work really hard because i wanted to enter an engineering school and it was very competitive coming from a technical degree background so I did put in the work, I did get the grades, and I ended up in my engineering school, Université de Technologie de Compiègne. So I'm currently a student at UTC, which is part of the Sorbonne Alliance. It's actually a general engineering school in a small city in France called Compiègne. And what's special about it is it follows the American system in the sense where it allows its students to choose its own subjects, which is not the case in France. It's also a school that's quite highly ranked in France for its mechanical engineering program. So in my first year, I continued doing more general mechanical engineering subjects such as pure mechanics, fluid mechanics, uh, more engineering design, material sciences, 
project management as well as quality management. And in my second year, I started my major in industrial design. So industrial design for me basically focuses on the user and its relationship with a product or a service. And the way I see it as an industrial engineer, you try to bring the highest value to your product or service in terms of ergonomics, product design, as well as the materials that you use for your products. So I got to do a few subjects in this major and it was very interesting. The professors were very encouraging, which is what I needed because I was not very confident about my abilities to design products. And what I like most about this major is that you get to see the entire process of a product design, literally from the part where the idea is hatched all the way to its first prototype. So you get to see its evolution throughout time and that's really, really satisfying. Throughout my time at UTC, I also got to do an internship in product development for a skincare brand, La Roche Posay, which is part of the L'Oreal group. And so if you can go from mechanical engineering to cosmetics, literally anything is possible. And it also just goes to show the doors that engineering opens for you because it really, really does open doors that you never even thought were possible. Now that we have established that engineering is super cool, let's talk about student life as an engineering student. So is it true that engineering majors study all day long and a zero social life? Yes. While that might be a slight exaggeration, it is somewhat true because you will spend most of your time studying, working on projects, attending classes, especially studying because the reality is engineering is hard. Has math made me cry? Yes. In my first four years, I found it hard to find time for hobbies and that was a huge change for me because in Malaysia, I was very involved in sports, in dance, in music and other extracurricular activities and I still managed to get good grades, although with very little sleep. But in France, my first three years consisted of a lot of studying, attending classes from 8am to 6pm and so I had very little avenue to find time for hobbies. Now I do admit that my time management and my studying method skills were not exactly as efficient as they are right now but still it was a very heavy timetable. In my final year, I had a drastic change in terms of my time management skills as well as my studying methods which allowed me to have a healthier schedule. I was getting 7 to 8 hours hours of sleep daily, I was able to gym four times a week, take on extra credits and have a lot of fun with my friends. And all that during a semester where I was taking fluid mechanics and pure mechanics. He is dealing with imposter syndrome. Now this is something that I've had to deal with especially in terms of my grades and being a female mechanical engineering student. Let me explain. Nowadays you have a lot more women that are getting into STEM which is great but you still have certain fields where the ratios are very much skewed to one side. Mechanical engineering and Computer science are your classics where you have a lot more male engineering students. For example, in my case, when I was doing my technical degree, I was one out of the three girls in a class of 55 students. On the other hand, you also have biological engineering, which is a female dominated engineering field. And so in the beginning, that imbalance could catch you off guard. And so adopting certain traits and being aware of your environment might help you deal with just that. During my technical degree, I've had my own classmates tell me that I only got the better grades just because I'm a girl and so the teachers favoured me. Not because I put in the hard work, not because I studied a lot more, but because I was a girl. And so naturally, I felt the need to prove myself to others and that's not very healthy. But throughout all of these different experiences, I definitely learned how to stand up for myself, be more assertive when the situation calls for it, and develop a thick skin and not let people get to you. As for the insecurities related to academic validation, I went from being a straight A student in Malaysia to being near the bottom of my class during my first year in France. And that felt horrible. I felt like I was not smart enough. I felt undeserving of the opportunity. I was extremely unforgiving and hard on myself when in reality, I was doing just fine. My marks were all right. It was just that everyone around me was also really good. And so it's really harmful and counterproductive to compare yourself to others. It's okay to look at others as an example and set goals for yourself. Healthy competition is okay, but it becomes unhealthy once you start comparing yourself to others. We all have our different strengths and weaknesses and we do not learn at the same pace. And that's alright. And so the sooner you accept that, the happier and less stressed up you will be.
So we have reached the end of this video. If you have made it this far, thank you for watching. Please drop a like if you have found this video interesting and do subscribe to my YouTube channel as it would help me quite a lot. I know that this degree can be challenging and remember that you are not alone. So stay strong because it's all going to be worth it in the end. Once again, thank you so much for watching and for making it this far and I'll see you in my next video. Ciao!